to 13, and we caught up with Big Ben after the game. Yeah, Ann Arbor's going to talk about AB made a great play. Did he really, or is that just him being AB? You know, um, he's the best in the world. We saw a matchup on there, nickel guy. Um, and, and I wanted the back shoulder a little more, um, kind of went up the field a little more than I wanted to. The guy, he had a chance to make a play, um, but the ball got on it pretty quick. And I thought, worst case scenario, it's incomplete, but AB's going to make a play, and, and he did just that. Um, it, was, it was fun to watch it happen. All right, Big Ben. I sat here, Schrager. You sat here. It was Witch Guy Wednesday, and it was. Mm -hmm. Doesn't this just feel like a game where Big Ben's like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doubting myself a little bit. I don't know if I still have it, even if it was sarcastic. Mm -hmm. And he's coming off a five interception game, so he's of course going to go on the road and knock out the only undefeated team left in their building. Yeah. Of course he does that. Of course. Of course he does that. And his numbers might not jump out. Off the, off the table, but he still had a, a game that was very productive. And for me, the most important piece of this game was seeing the big three play well in one game because we've seen it in spurts. We see Big Ben have a good game, seen AB have a good game. We've seen Lev do it, but we didn't see them do it all at one time. Lev 170 plus, they gave him the ball over 30 times. AB, he had eight catches for 155, and Big Ben taking care of the ball and doing what he needs to do. If they can play like this, and by they, I mean those three guys have a big game every single week, we'll be talking about the Steelers in the postseason and contending for a title. But we've seen inconsistency. The question is, after a big game up against one of the best teams in the league, can they do this every mm -hmm. single week? Mm -hmm. You know what I was looking at? I was during the highlight. I was wondering, why did Le'Veon get flagged for that celebration? He did like the Ken Norton where he yeah. boxed. I thought that was cool. Now, apparently I read up, you can use the ball as a prop, but not the yeah. goalpost. You cannot touch that thing. Yeah. So I was scratching my head about that. Which is but, why you can't dunk and touch it, remember? Exactly. You can dunk and touch So maybe if he punched but didn't touch it. Right. That being Got said, this felt like a sequel to me. It felt like almost the exact same game where the Steelers beat the Chiefs in the playoffs. It was in Arrowhead. It was sort of low scoring. Alex Smith almost pulled that out at the end. But then they didn't do it. And I hate to be the Debbie Downer today about the injuries, but I feel like this is the first time the Chiefs really missed Eric Berry. Mm -hmm. I think he was the best player on their team. Antonio made a lot of his hay over the middle. Marcus Peters did not have a great day. I think they missed Eric Barry a lot. So they got to be better moving forward. Alex Smith has been tearing up the league. Kareem Hunt has been tearing up the league. And the Steel Curtain was in the building last night. I think the defense was awesome for the Steelers. Yeah. And if they're going to be playing January football. They're going to, they're going to have to get back to that. And I love that James Harrison had the sack at the end, the closer, the ageless wonder. Steelers offense, and you're hearing stuff from Ian Rapport about Martavis Bryant not being happy. Right. And every week it's a new thing, it's a soap opera. The defense came to play, and the defense won that game yesterday. I, I think the Steelers are the best team in the AFC North, Ooh. and their defense is going to lead them to anything in that division. I keep seeing all this, oh, Lev Bell, finally six weeks in, like missing training yeah. camp in the preseason. He's back to himself. Aren't, shouldn't Steelers fans be so mad at him? That they've lost. Like, mm. am I wrong? He might have been better from the get-go. I don't know. Like, yeah. if he, like, if, if, if he's if he's the identity of this offense, and he should be, and they're finally like, oh, they're giving him 30 carries, and he looks great. Mm. Shouldn't don't look at me like that. Shouldn't Steelers the no. locker room be like, where were you? You, yeah. you could have been like this from the jump. Momo was at, big at on that during point, the call. At and at I point, love Lev Bell. Yeah. There's water under the bridge. They're kind of like, okay. all right, he's here, he's balling. Like, let's not bring up old stuff. I think okay. that's how they're thinking about it. And the players in the locker room too. They're like, all right, Lev, we know you missed it. You know, it took you a while to get the rhythm. Just keep the rhythm there. Yeah. Nate, I'd like to bring up some old stuff if you don't mind. Yeah. Let's go back to Friday to the Nine Echo segment Ooh. before we went to the weekend. And Mr. Burleson had something to say about that Bears Ravens game. <laughs> Roll it. I'm going Trubisky over Flacco. Okay. Really? I think In the Baltimore. Bears could go up there and shake things up in Baltimore. So I'm going with Chicago Bears. I think this is the game, the coming out to. He got the oh! call! Mitch and Dion, two of my brothers, take it away. Hey, I, I got to admit, the Bears' offense wasn't good at all. And I had reservations about you getting in because I think you have a promising career, and I didn't want them to throw you out there earlier. But you responded, man. I appreciate that. Um, I'm, I was trying to get in there as soon as possible, just do what I can for my team. And uh, coming in as a rookie, I think you just got to, as a rookie, you just got to realize that um, – there's going to be a lot of adversity. It's not always going to be the best situation, but I got great teammates who stick behind me, and uh, it's all about just prime time. <laughs> and, you know, hey, I got my guys here, and yeah, you just you you just got to take whatever situation thrown at you, make the best out of it, and stick together with your guys, and come away with team wins like we did today. 
Mitchell Trubisky Pretty gets cool the to call. Get the call. 113 yards. He kept, you know, matriculating the ball down the field, if you he will. Did. Two huge throws. He didn't what, throw it a lot. He what do we huge make of his performance? I, I love it. In the clutch, on the road, his first road game ever, and he won. Yeah. Look, they was mostly Jordan Howard, but he made a couple massive throws. Listen, he got the call. Okay, that's all we need to say. He got yeah. the call. I was happy for it. Jordan Howard should have gotten the Jordan call. They run the ball 54 He's times on the other line. That's crazy. Yeah, you know what? I feel like as a fan base, and this is, you know, every show nowadays on TV, every radio show, when a quarterback throws less than 20 passes, we kind of feel like, oh, you know, he didn't play a good game. They protect him. You know what? It's, it's the way the game plan goes. If you have a good running game, if they don't force the ball down the field, then you got to give credit to the victors. you got to give credit to a, a team that can go out there and execute a game plan where the quarterback doesn't have to throw 50 times. We've seen over the last couple of weeks where quarterbacks uncharacteristically will throw 45 to 50 times. That is not good football. Yeah. I know it's exciting football, but it's not good football. So... For the, him to go out there and throw less than 20 times, their team to win, him to I take care it. of the rock, that is great football. It's old school football, but it's great quality said football. old school football. So Tariq Cohen threw a touchdown pass. He's yes. five foot six. This is from our searcher, Matt Hamilton. He's the shortest player to throw yeah. a touchdown since a guy named Wee Willie Smith in 1934. Wee Willie Smith. <laughs> Wee Willie? Wee Willie. Sounds like a Kyle Brett made of my nickname Willie in college. Wee Smith. He was five foot six, and he threw a touchdown pass in 1934. And that offense at the Bears are running right now that Dowell Loggins is dialing up was the same offense that we Willie Smith ran in 1934. 54 rushing attempts, 17 pass attempts, not an NFL wide receiver on the roster. It doesn't matter. The Bears found a way to get this done. They just run the ball down your throat and rely on special teams. I, this Bears offense is unlike anything we've seen in 20 years. Here. It is from 1912. Can the, the Bears win the NFC North? Yes. Yes, they can. Any team can, right? Wide open. It's pretty fun. Trubisky. That's the silver That's lining. Big Fangio too. Always. That defense came to play. I've got a Wee Willie Smith throwback jersey I'll be wearing tomorrow. Oh boy. Wee Willie Smith. Yes. <laughs> Let's check in with Will Silva, guys. The NFL newsroom uh, is a Wee Willie Silva. <laughs> Wee Willie Silva. Take it away. Happy Monday, buddy. Oh, wee Wee Willie. Happy, Happy uh, Monday to you, Kay. <laughs> Heavy money to the rest of the goof troop that's over there in New York. Uh, there is no shortage of suitors for free agent linebacker Navarro Bowman following. <laughs> it wasn't game ready. I did so much better at home. Folded under pressure. Redemption will be had. So his first opportunity, the dance didn't go as well, but he's going to have many more opportunities. I just get that feeling, Kay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm dying because <laughs> we're talking about what? the Mark Ingram dance and, of course, Traeger's on the sidelines. And I'm like, yeah, that's the move that they did in the Rolex video, the BYU Cougar mm -hmm. uh, dance video. And then Traeger did it. Right. It was so good. I know, I know you won't do it again, I'm but it was so good. Why not? So Come on, Schrager. Come on. Can we wait to watch <laughs> Come on. the zone on Tuesday. <laughs> oh. It was so good. Come on, Schrager. Nope, Man. we're waiting for a sponsored segment. Well, he was trying to outdo <laughs> Swearinger. Remember, you sent us in the group text yes. a video of Swearinger doing a hell of a dance there before the DJ game. DJ Swearinger's on one. And then Mark Ingram there. <laughs> trying to top it. We're here for all of it. No Great stuff. That's why we're here. Out there. I'm going to get myself together. And coming up, could a controversial call at the goal line affect the outcome of the AFC East? We're going to show you this. You decide. Tweet us at